Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today, I'm doing something a little bit different. As you may have seen on either Instagram, Facebook or TikTok, um, I posted that I am actually going to be giving up Kine at the end of this year. A lot of people ask why. I tried to do a quick video on TikTok, trying to explain why. Um, I also explained why on Facebook and Instagram on the posts. Um, but a lot of people wanted me to go in a bit more detail and try and make a whole video about it. So in this video, I'll basically be explaining everything that's been going on and what I plan in the future. So yeah, um, I started racing obviously pff, about July last year. Um, well, that was my first practice session anyway, uh, when I first started the vlogs. Um, and it was at Mansell's Raceway. Obviously, I just got my cart. Um, I'd done a practice session the weekend before at Clay. Uh, that was off camera though, I didn't record any of it. But um, yeah, it was very fun to say the least to be able to actually achieve getting my own car and actually have the opportunity to own my own car. Um, and that's all thanks to my mate Peter and his dad Rick. Um, massive shout out to them because none of this, all these vlogs that you've seen the past year, no way would have been possible without them. 100% um, credit to them. Um, so yeah, obviously I started back last July doing some practice sessions. Uh, and then we got around about to September time and I actually entered my first race at Clay Pigeon Raceway in the IKR series. Obviously that was running a pre-Evo engine on an older chassis car and that's still the chassis I'm running today. The chassis is like 2014 so it's a lot older than a lot of people's chassis. Um, so obviously as you can tell straight away I was trying to do it on a budget. I ran a pre-Evo for the first couple races. So I did the IKR Clay Pigeon Autumn Series um, round one with a Prevo. Uh, same with the October um, round. I did that one with a Prevo as well. November got cancelled, so that was massively unfortunate. But due to high weather conditions and possible snow, that's crazy to think now. Um, but yeah, we had to cancel that one sadly, so we didn't race in that one. Then I didn't race until January again, which was the... Uh, well, the final round of the Autumn Series, the one that got cancelled in November, got pushed back to January. So, um, yeah, we raced in that one, and I was luckily enough to be able to get a Evo kit for my pre-Evo. So I managed to chuck the Evo kit on. Massive thanks to Andy Wyatt, actually, um, who you may have seen that I've posted on Facebook and Instagram. Um, his two sons as well, Sam Wyatt and Ethan. Massive shout out to them, they're incredible racing drivers and they've actually recently just come away with incredible results, Sam actually winning the NKC Championship, so massive congrats to them. Thanks to him, I actually managed to get an Evo kit to fit on my cart, so it gave my cart a little bit more power and gave me a little bit more of an opportunity to try and get in the mix a little bit. Um, obviously, you could run pre-Evos or Evos in that series and there was a couple of pre-Evos racing. Um, and I did pretty decent against them, obviously I had a few battles, um, as you can see on the clip on the screen now. You know, I had some racing with them, I managed to do a little bit of overtaking and battling. Um, but when I got the Evo kit, that's when I really was hoping that it would all change, I could try and do a little bit better. Obviously, I literally chucked it on first uh, race day, so I didn't have any practice with it, I just jumped straight into the deep end basically. And I had to hope that that's um, where it would go and I'd pull something off. Uh, it was a little bit of a struggle getting used to it. I got the hang of it around about the final, but sadly it was a little bit of a struggle. I think we finished like 15th in that one, which was a pretty disappointing result. But once again, like I said, I've tried to do it on a tight budget as much as possible. I didn't want to go overboard and spend so much money, brand new chassis, brand new engine or anything. Um, I tried to keep it as cheap as possible and still try to be as competitive as possible. Um, so we'll skip to a couple months later. Obviously, it was I was noticing that it was costing me a lot more. Obviously, this is around about the time where I was running into a lot of incidents on track and having a lot of problems. So I really had to watch out, really. Luckily, massive thank you to Rick. He helped me out a lot with spare parts and um, maintaining my car and getting it repaired for the next race, uh, which I really appreciate. But it was still you know, massive problems. I had to do the entrance fee, I had to do, if I wanted to do practice days, I had to pay for the practice days, and if I did damage it and we didn't have any spare parts, I had to buy spare parts from Clay Cart Shop. For example, a bumper uh, broke off back along. Um, I used to have a metal bumper, you may have noticed in some of the vlogs, uh, that actually snapped off in one of the practice sessions, so I had to go buy a new bumper, which was a plastic one, and that alone cost me £150, and that was just for that one day. So yeah, it was a little bit difficult. Obviously I was noticing that I was having problems with trying to afford it. I could afford it, um, but obviously with the fact that it's coming 100% out of my own pocket, the problem I was finding was that 
I wouldn't be able to save up any money at all. And obviously I'm now 20 years of age. So the fact that I am still spending all my money and all my earnings into carting and not being able to put any savings back is a bit of a problem. Obviously, I know that I could carry on carting and I could carry on racing. Um, but the problem is I'm just saving back no money. And the fact that I need to try and move house eventually at one point, then it's just takes it from here all the way up to here. So yeah, it's a massive shame that I can't continue. Um, and I will be selling my car after this last round at Mansell's. But it's been a lot of fun. And like I said, a massive shout out to Rick and Peter who have helped me out massively. Like I said, this would no way be possible if it wasn't for them. To be honest, back when I competed in my Club 100 round at Clay, um, I remember saying that this would be the highest I'd ever get in karting. And that was before I met Peter and Rick, so I had no clue if I was going to be able to get any higher. I didn't even think I was going to be able to compete in Club 100 again, let alone compete in my own kart in races, and even an NKC race in, well, August of this year, which is insane to say the least. So yeah, that's my explanation of why I'm giving up Karin at the end of this year. Um, so this is actually going to be, well, next year is going to actually be my first year that I don't really compete in a competitive environment in my own race car or cart. Um, obviously, as you can see in the background there, we've got some trophies. That's from my Allgrass series, which I did from 2015 to 2017. 2018, I had a little bit of a break. I did some cart racing in between, but not massive amounts. Um, in 2019, I did a lot more rental karting and even did a club on underground, like I said. And then 2020, obviously, I started getting into testing Nathan and Peter's carts out. And then eventually in 2021 buying my own cart, which was Peter's old cart. So yeah, um, it's going to be a little bit odd next year, obviously not being able to race uh, at all. There might be the one-off round that I do. Um, maybe I'll hire a cart from a team or something and race in an IKR at Clay or Mansell's or something. But as I'm aware of right now, that will not be happening. Um, what I will be doing next year though, is I will probably be following around Peter and keeping up with his progress. Um, Peter is actually moving to 250cc uh, shifter cars next year, which is a massive step from senior Rotax to, uh, well, 250cc shifter carts. Um, so it's going to be quite good and interesting to see his progress. You probably will see on my Instagram or Facebook um, me uploading um, photos and videos of him, you know, racing. And well, I'll probably help out Rick a little bit, obviously Peter's dad, with the mechanics and maintenance side of it, try and help them out as much as possible. So it's going to be a good year next year, obviously try and learn the ins and outs of shifter cart, which is going to be a lot more different and a lot more difficult compared to uh, the senior Rotax class. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see how Peter does, so hopefully he'll get on really well next year and you guys will be able to keep up to date with that. Um, with plans of me racing, personally, like I said, I'm not too sure how it's going to go. I guess we'll just have to see where it goes from here, but um, I'm hoping, like I said, maybe I'll do the one-off round at Clay, maybe do a little bit of rental carting, but as of right now, I'm not really too sure 100% why I stand on that. But yeah, um, like I said, we've still got one more race, which is actually tomorrow, which is the practice day, and the day after is the race day for me as of recording this. So we've still got one more race, one more vlog to enjoy before I give it up. So let's try and make this last one a banger, but I'll see you next time.